2024 has been an absolutely spectacular year for Visual Studio. It's been packed full of new features and developer productivity and infused with AI. There've been so many new features that I wanted to hear directly from the team members that build Visual Studio every single day about what their favorite features are. So let's get into it. I'm Matt Christensen, and I wanna show you some of my favorite features of Visual Studio in 2024, which also happens to be some of the smallest. We'll start with Image Hover Preview. So every time you hover the mouse cursor over a reference to an image, no matter what type of file it is, it shows up here in a little preview window and you can see the height and the width and the weight in kilobytes or bytes or whatever. Uh, so really handy, brings a little bit of the visual into Visual Studio here. Uh, love that. The next one is uh, if you got some errors, you see here, here I got some C sharp and I have some errors and let's say I wanna go to the error list and copy that error. Uh, what it used to be was uh, it would copy the entire row such that it would look something like this. And it takes all the column headers and everything and that's kind of annoying, right? Uh, because what I often want is just the description. So now if I go down to my error list and I just hit control C, or in this case, I'm just showing you here by, by showing the context menu to copy. And if we go back, we can paste that in here and we can see it only copied the text the description that I'm looking for here. Another thing I can do, because often it's because I wanna do a web search, I can just right click and say, search the web for help, right? Or click control F1, super handy. Let's open another instance of Visual Studio. Now what we've added is for most, uh, if not all of the different project types, you can now copy, paste, or drag and drop between open instances of Visual Studio. So now I'm dragging a file from one instance of Visual Studio into another, from one project to another uh, in two different uh, instances of Visual Studio. Another one we did was to be able to use control forward slash to comment. If I hit the control forward slash again, it uncomments. So it toggles line comments on and off like this. Another one for the muscle memory here is uh, something from VS Code, Control Shift P to open up feature search where we can, like it's kind of the command palette, you know, and you can search for all sorts of things. Let's search for options. This brings me into another feature that we added in 2024. The ability to, you know, underline or strike through or make any text italic. So now I'm gonna do comments. And if we scroll up, you can see now I have this comment here, italic, looks super nice, so absolutely love this. And those are my favorite features of 2024. Hey everyone, my name is Dahlia and I work on the Visual Studio team. My favorite feature for this year is the ability to easily get help naming my variables, methods, or classes. Let me show you. Here I have a test class with a bunch of test methods, but you'll notice that the names for the methods aren't very descriptive. So let's say I wanna give them some better names. I'll go to my first test, right click on it and say rename. And here I'll see the new feature that we shipped in Visual Studio this year that gives me some suggestions on what this method name should be. And it's according to what this method actually does and what it tests. In this case, it looks like this method tests that one item has been added correctly to the cart and I can select one of these names. So I'm gonna go ahead and select Valdi single item addition and press enter. You can do that with all the other test methods. You can also do them with uh, variables. You can do them with classes. So in this case, let's say I wanna rename this class. I'll go rename them and I'll see some suggestions on what this test class should be named. I'll take one of these and I will rename my class. The reason I really love this feature is because a lot of times I'm reading someone else's code and the methods aren't very descriptive. It takes me time to read through the logic and understand what it's doing. But in this case, I don't have to do that anymore. So check it out. Hi everyone, my name is Jesse Houghton. I'm on the version control and co-pilot teams in Visual Studio. And my favorite feature from this year is how Copilot is helping me write commit messages and review my commits super easily. Let me show you how it works. So I've made some changes in this file and I'm ready to write my commit message, but I don't want to do all of the summary and then have to make sure that I'm covering all my changes. So I'll go ahead and let Copilot write that message for me. 
In the past, we had a pre-canned commit message, but you'll notice that I have a bit more customization going on here. And that's because in tools options, we've enabled the ability to add custom instructions on top of your commit messages to make them sound more like you. The next thing that I wanna show is that when I'm getting ready to create my pull request, I wanna make sure I'm not introducing any silly changes. So let's see if Copilot has any review for me. Looks like it does. And if I click on it, I'm taken straight to the place where Copilot has some suggestions and I'm super confident and ready to commit my code. Hey everyone, my name is Cy Brand. I work on the C++ team. And my favorite Visual Studio feature from this year is the memory layer viewer. And I'll show you how it works. Here's the code for a debugger that I've been working on. This file has code to represent the stack of a program that's running. And you can see right here, if I hover over the name of this type, it immediately shows me the size is 56 bytes and the alignment is eight bytes. If I go ahead and view the memory layout, you can actually see that we have a gap in here. And this would quite nicely fit right over here by the TID. So if I go and make this change, moving the inline height to the end of the object, like so, and then going back up, we can see that the size of my type has decreased and I've compressed it in memory. Maybe not so useful for a small example like this, but when you're making tons of these objects, you want them to be dense in memory, this can be a lifesaver. Hi, my name's Andy, and I'm a product manager on Visual Studio. And my favorite feature in Visual 2022 this year has been something in the debugger that makes it super easy to debug .NET code that's using async and await. So if you've been a long time .NET user, you've probably had the scenario where you're debugging something that happens to be using the await keyword, and you found it difficult to figure out what's going on in debug. If you can see this example here, the simple website that fetched data from a JSON API. And here you can see when I'm debugging, we're stopped in the debugger, but none of the information is available that I need to debug. Like if you look at the URL, it's empty, there's nothing. And that's all because the .NET machinery for handling async and await has uh, kind of abstracted it away. You know, this is actually a later point in time, and so that information is not there right now. So I can't debug this any further, which is a real pain. Uh, I would have to have a set of breakpoint, turn on first chance exceptions, uh, or of course, um, use the treasure snapshots. But if I change one thing and move this from being a .NET 8 project to a .NET 9 feature, we can use an awesome new feature for async debugging inside Visual Studio. And so let's just change that uh, property to the latest version and then rerun the application. And again, just, you know, fetch that data. And this time around, what you'll see is we actually get the information, making it so much easier to debug. So click fetch again, and boom, you stopped. But this time you can see, obviously, that the exception is there, the URL is there. So all the data that you need to debug. In this case, I've made a simple error. I made a typo in the URL, uh, which I couldn't have spotted before uh, without doing more work. So that's my new favorite feature in Visual Studio uh, for this year, using .NET and Visual Studio 2022 to make async debugging that much easier. Thank you for listening and have a great new year. Hi everyone, I'm Rachel Kong. I'm on the .NET Maui team. And my favorite feature in Visual Studio is the new include sample content checkbox, which unlocks the beautiful new .NET Maui sample template right from Visual Studio. Let's take a look at how we can access the brand new .NET MAUI sample app template from Visual Studio. I'm going to go ahead and pop open Visual Studio, create a new project, and search the templates for MAUI. Now here we have access to all of the different project templates for MAUI, Blazor Hybrid, and more. But I'm going to click on this first one, the standard .NET MAUI app project template. And from here, I'm going to name my app, best MAUI app ever. And next, we have this option to check on this include sample content checkbox. Now unchecked, it'll give us access to the standard .NET MAUI app with a .NET bot and a button, very simple and straightforward. But if we check this include sample content checkbox, we'll now have access to so much more. It includes controls from the Syncfusion toolkit for .NET MAUI, the .NET MAUI community toolkit, and so much more. And we can see this here in the MAUI program.cs file. And here you can see that we have configured those toolkits. And if we take a look at what that app looks like, we have a featureful to-do application that leverages the beautiful controls from Syncfusion Toolkit for .NET MAUI, configures navigation, and so much more. So be sure to check it all out right here from Visual Studio. 
Hey, I'm Bruno, part of the Cloud Advocates teams, and my favorite feature this year in Visual Studio is Copilot Chat, Copilot Edit, everything Copilot related. The first feature I love is extension in Copilot Chat. This allows me to ask Copilot Chat about specific domains, for example, the code in the workspace, but I can also ask questions about GitHub, connect with model from GitHub models, or ask questions about Visual Studio itself. This is really amazing. I also love that we now have the ability to choose the models that we want to use, including GPT-4.0, O1 Mini, and more. Hey, we even had cloud here. Copilot Edits is another great feature that allows me to create an editing session, where I can quickly iterate on code changes. Here, I will give it a prompt to make several changes in the project, including adding missing libraries from the main Python file. Let's also ask it to update the Docker file with them as well. As you can see, I can use the hashtag symbol to specify the file. Now, when we run it, it will create a full plan of edits that it will suggest the changes that I need to make. I can accept all the suggested changes or click in one to view the changes for that specific change and accept those changes. Those are just some of my favorite features that are included in the Visual Studio in the latest preview version. Hi, my name is Maya Kellner and I'm with the Visual Studio extensibility team. My favorite features this year are the modern extension manager in Visual Studio and extension hot loading. Let me show you. Here I have a MAUI app using some XAML and I wanna download an extension to help me with that XAML. So I'll go to extensions, manage extensions, and that will open the modern extension manager in Visual Studio. Now what you can see here is compared to the old extension manager, we now have on the right this large pane for detailed extension descriptions and screenshots. This will help you find extensions that are right for you without having to download them. So I'm going to search for the extension Write XAML. We're very excited about this extension and others like it because it was written as an out of process extension using Visual Studio .extensibility, which is our new modern platform for writing Visual Studio extensions. We're particularly excited because extensions written entirely in Visual Studio .extensibility can take advantage of a special feature we call hot loading. So in the past, if you wanted to install an extension, you needed to click install and then close and reopen Visual Studio before you could take advantage of the new extension. But with hot loading, you click install and the installer will pop up and let you start installing right from Visual Studio without having to close anything down or lose your context. So I'll click install, accept the prompt, and wait for the extension to download and install. You can see now that the extension installation has completed. And now if I go to the installed tab in the extension manager, you can see Bright XAML installed. So now I can do things like open a code file and take advantage of some of the features of this extension without ever having had to close VS. We are very excited about hot loading and we hope you are too. Hi, I'm David Lee, the Game Dev Product Manager at Visual Studio. This year, my favorite feature is the ability to open Unreal Engine projects directly in VS. Let's take a look. To open up an Unreal Engine project directly, you can go to File, Open, Unreal Engine Project, and select your U project. This way, you don't have to regenerate your solution every time you need to make a change to your project. Once this opened, we'll have generated your editor, development, and Win64 target but if you need more targets, you can go to the configuration page, click on the combo boxes, and generate more targets that way. We have also added an Unreal Engine toolbar, first of which allows you to add command line arguments. For example, no shader compile. Next is a quick attach to process. This combo box already knows about your Unreal Engine processes, but you can also use this for any process on your system. Simply type the name and it will come up on this list. Next, there is the Start Unreal Engine Integration Server button, which increases the performance of your Unreal Engine test adapter. You can also rescan your Unreal Engine blueprints, open up the UE log, and reopen the Configuration Tools page if you ever close it. Hey, how's it going? I'm Sandy. I work on the Visual Studio team, and I'm going to show you some cool changes we made this year to Code Search. So as usual, we can launch Search by using the button up top, or you can use keyboard shortcuts like Control-T. And when we bring it up, you'll notice that we added this new drop down here to change the scope. Uh, and this is cool because normally I like to search my entire solution, but if I'm looking for a particular field in my current file, there's like a million here. My all-in-one search is configured so that when I switch to the members filter, it remembers 
that I really just want to search in the current document. So that takes me right where I need to go. Another cool thing that you can do is you can dock this window now. Uh, so when I click this, it's going to dock to the side. Uh, it can dock to the bottom. You can move it around and decide where you want to go. It can hide, pop back out. Uh, and if you don't like this, you want it back the way it was, you can always switch it back to the traditional window. It's so cool to hear directly from the team members working and building Visual Studio on what their favorite features are. And you might be wondering, well, what's James's favorite new feature that was added into Visual Studio this year? I'm a huge fan of .NET Aspire, helping me build better .NET applications with more insight into them. And I love the one-click integration to easily orchestrate my applications and get access to the packages. So let's take a look. All right, here I am inside of my tiny shop application. This has a backend and a frontend with Blazor and ASP.NET Core. Now here, of course, if I want to do multiple project startups, I can create a new profile. And I also have this new share option too, which is cool. So I can check that into source code, but I want to get this into .NET Aspire to help me build better applications. All I need to do here is right click, hit add, and then boom, .NET Aspire orchestrator support. Visual Studio will automatically discover everything that I need to do in the application and do it for me. So this is going to add in my app host, which is going to help orchestrate my project add my project dependencies, and it'll also give me these service defaults that'll automatically configure my application with health checks, service discovery, and open telemetry, and pull down all of the NuGet packages for me automatically. Better yet, inside of the app host project, what we can see here is that it's automatically configured the distributed application and configured the store. Better yet, Visual Studio's upgraded and added a few lines of code into my program CS in my store. Now, I also want to add in my product so I can right click, hit add, and add .NET Aspire Orchestrator support. Visual Studio automatically detects that there's an app host and it simply updates it. So now, when I come back over into my program CS for my app host, we have both our store and our products here. Now, Visual Studio has automatically set the app host as my startup project and it's configured here. So all I need to do is hit run, and now the app host will be launched. And we'll take a look at what's in that program CS and start up the store and products and tie them together. But instead of launching a bunch of different windows and a bunch of different browser windows, it's going to just launch the .NET Aspire dashboard, giving me insight right here to be able to launch my application and see all of the different components working together. Here's my products coming back in. I can now also dive into my logs and into my traces. And that's how Visual Studio enables me to easily orchestrate my applications with .NET Aspire in just a few minutes. Well, there you have it. Those are just some features that were released this year in Visual Studio for developers. It has been packed full of developer productivity features and amazing brand new AI features to make you more productive than ever. But we wanna know what's your favorite feature? Leave us comments below on what you loved in this year's releases of Visual Studio, whether you're on the stable mainline or you're rocking those new previews. We would absolutely love to hear your feedback. So leave comments below and let the team know. And of course, head over to the developer community to let us know what else you wanna see in upcoming versions of Visual Studio. Last but not least, if you enjoyed this, feel free to give it a like, smash that subscribe button, turn on notifications so you get notified every single time we put out a new video right here on the Visual Studio YouTube. So until next time, thanks for watching.